Today we are going to learn. We are beginning Fish Fridays, a weekly event where we learn new stuff about fish. And I thought what better way to learn some new stuff about fish than to check in with all the new fish that have been discovered this year. Basically, we're going to look at every new fish that has been discovered and described this past year and we're gonna learn stuff about them, we're gonna learn stuff about their families. Because although I am a fish biologist, I will say my, you know, knowledge of freshwater fish and especially local freshwater fish is almost next to none. However, my knowledge of like random, you know, ocean families and families of fish that are in say, you know, South Asia or in Russia or something like that is very, very, you know, limited. Obviously better than the average person, but I still feel like I don't know as much as I should uh, about a lot of species and families. So we're gonna go through new fish species together and learn some cool stuff about them. Uh, and for that, there's actually a subreddit called New Fish Species. And every time there's a new fish species, it gets posted here in the subreddit. So we can look at it, learn about it, do some research, Hopefully cool stuff like that. Puff. So the first one, the most recent 24 days ago, this is actually done by someone that I'm friends with. Uh, this is, oh God, Sir Sir Hillebrus Benefinma. New species of wrasse from the Maldives. Just a very beautiful fish. I don't know a lot about wrasse. I believe they're reef fish, but I think we should learn about them. Let's learn about their genus. So they are in the family Labradae, which makes sense. The Labradae is all of the wrasses. So it makes perfect sense that they would be in there. Native to reefs in the Indian and Pacific Ocean, commonly kept in aquaria. So the Labradae in general are wrasses, most of which are brightly colored. People love the wrasses because of how brightly colored they are. Let's learn some stuff about wrasses. They have protractile mouths, separate jaw teeth that jut outwards, recognized by their thick lips. <laughs> nice. It's a good example of why soft rays are not a good identifier tool for a lot of fish. The range is six to 21. That's such a huge range. How could you ever identify something by that? They have sex change from female to male, like we talked about with uh, with clownfish in the ichthyology lecture. Oh yeah, cleaner wrasses are in the wrasses in the Labradae. Cleaner wrasses are super cool. We've talked about them, and they were in the uh, they were in that fish tier list from Tier Zoo, where they have that you know mutualist relationship with other uh, other fish like big sharks and stuff, and can clean parasites off of them. They use rocks to smash open sea urchins. That's pretty dope. And look at their diversity. Pretty dope. I am a big wrasse fan. We learned something about wrasses. Let's look at the next fish. Pygmy goby, Trimapana panamorphum. Pygmy goby. I have never heard of a pygmy goby. What is a pygmy goby? Genus in the family Gobidae, makes sense. Gobies are in the family Gobidae. Indian and Pacific Ocean again. Pygmy gobies or dwarf gobies, how small are they? Can reach a length of 0.98 inches, 2.5 centimeters. Jesus, less than an inch long. Trying to like conceptualize, that is a small ass fish. And that's max size, candy cane pygmy goby. See, that's a dope ass fish. If I had asked this during a identify the fish competition, no one would get this. The candy cane dwarf goby. Seems like there's a lot, but not really well described. Yeah, there's 98 pygmy gobies, but they're not well described. Look at how many, so if they're red on Wikipedia, that means that there doesn't, there, there's no Wikipedia page for them. Like if I click this, it doesn't go anywhere. But if there's blue, it means they have a Wikipedia page. So of the 98 species of pygmy goby, what, three or five? Five of them have Wikipedia pages. So there are 93 species of pygmy gobies that don't have Wikipedia pages, you know, with things describing about them, which means they've probably only ever been described in a paper in, you know, one of these references. So if you're ever interested in doing like Wikipedia work and contributing to ichthyology, you could probably read some of these papers and then make pages for a lot of these fish. I've done that same thing with extinct fish. It'd be pretty cool. You could basically just fill this in and make pygmy gobies heard of. Gobies in general are one of the largest families, 2000 species. I know they're mostly small. Yeah, they're in marine, freshwater, brackish. Gobies are pretty much everywhere, though in a lot of places they're like highly invasive and disturb ecosystems, where like freshwater gobies disturb darter ecosystems, I know that much. They have burrow construction, they have kleptogamy. So that's sneaking uh, behavior. So basically that means that sometimes the males will pretend to be females to get in with a group of females and have a male protect them. And then they reproduce with the, with the females that are being protected by the big male. So basically there's a, a whole evolutionary line of these fish that pretend to be females so that they can get in with the females. They have sex determination. So they can de determine their sex based on the conditions, what's needed. Seems to be pretty common in ocean 
in you know ocean like reef fish for some reason they have symbiotic relationships with burrowing shrimps i've seen this yeah they're gobies that live with shrimps and the gobies will build like a, a nest and the shrimp will like you know clean it dig it out take care of it and the goby will protect it and in exchange both the shrimp and the the goby have a safe place to live and have their babies and stuff like that pretty cool what's the next fish a species of queen fish i've never heard of a queen fish scomborodes pelagicus Okay, they're Karangids. So Karangidae is the Jacks, I believe, right? Jacks, Pompanos, Jack Mackerels, Scads, Runners. There's only five species in this genus. They're pretty interesting looking. I guess that one's particularly deep bodied. Makes sense. They have these finlets that, uh, that tuna have, which is interesting. I don't think I've seen another fish that has finlets like tuna have. If you didn't know, if you didn't watch the ichthyology lecture, basically these stop turbulent flow. These create a laminar flow. So as like the water goes past the fish, those little finlets being there just redirects the water away rather than curving in on itself over the tail, which makes it, you know, much more of an efficient swimmer than the average fish. Which usually if, if it has finlets means it goes fast as fuck. This is interesting. All of the other jacks that are shown here have this like one dorsal fin and then like it's sort of you know, has like a shallow part to it after. This guy has two dorsal fins, the scad. It almost seems like the scad is not very closely related because that's a pretty distinct difference to have a whole extra di dorsal fin. All right, who's next? Whoa, Calogobius alba punctatus and Calogobius dorsomaculatus, two new species of gobies from Japan. Well, we just learned about gobies, but let's learn about these guys. Gobadai found in brackish and marine waters in the Indian Pacific Ocean. It does seem like a lot of the new fish that are being found are from the Indian Pacific Ocean. For a timeline, by the way, this was two months ago this fish was described. There are probably over 40 species. Look at this. This is another genus that if you were wanted to be someone who would fill in, contribute to scientific knowledge for the rest of time, you could probably read some of these papers on the Caligobius species and fill in all of this. There's only one Caligobius clarkii is the only one that is actually. Oh, wait, it doesn't even have a description. This just links back to Caligobius. So not a single Caligobius species has its own Wikipedia page. They're all completely undescribed. They're distinguished by ridges of papillae on their heads. See this? So I guess they have this, but other gobies don't. And that's how you can tell that it's in the genus Caligobius. These little chuk chuk coming out of their heads. Deep sea batfish. Haliotopsis marii. Oh, there's four new deep sea batfish. That is a weird looking fish. Seven recognized species. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, 17, I was gonna say. 17 recognized species. Not a one has a has a Wikipedia page. So I guess we'll go with the family. I've never heard of this family in my life. Oxocephalidae. I don't know what oxo means, but cephal is head. Specifically adapted for benthic. Batfishes, deep sea batfishes, hand fishes, and sea bats. Okay, I've seen that. I've seen like frog fishes, hand fishes, stuff like that. Doors eventually compress, so they're flat, but they kind of like sit on legs. They're so odd. Look at this. What an odd fish. Isn't it crazy that this actually exists? 75 species in the oceans, oceans and tropical seas around the world. But then there's deep sea ones that are even more flat. And it makes sense that something like this would be fine in the deep sea. Because the main issue with living in the deep sea, like, yeah, if you go far down enough, there's not a lot of food. But the main issue with living in the deep sea is pressure. And so flat bodies are just better at dealing with pressure. The Elysium, a modified dorsal fin ray on the front of the head, creating a lure. Oh, so like the anglerfish has, it's a modified dorsal fin on the front of the head. Did you know that? Apparently the thing on the front of a door of an anglerfish's head that they dangle is a modified dorsal fin, which I didn't know. And some of these guys have that as well. All right, what's next? Four months ago. What in the crap is this? Biden ichthys? Please don't tell me it's named after Joe Biden. It's four months ago, so it's very possible. Genus Biden ichthys. Vivaporous brotilus. What does that mean? What is a vivaporous viviparous brotilus? I know what viviparous means. What is a brotilus? So if you don't know, Vi viviparous means like um vive means like live live in a lot of languages yeah like vivre and that just means live birth whereas oviparous means they give you know they release eggs but i don't know what a brotilus is okay let's learn what a brotula is of ophidiform fishes cuscules perlules okay so they're eel-like fishes they bear live young right that's what viviparous means so I assume Ophidiforms is the Bratillas in general? No, it's just the Viviparous Bratillas. 
So they specifically have their own family. But I guess that must mean that there's other... Why would they call them the viviparous Brachulas if there isn't a regular Brachula? Since 2002, 110 species have been added to the family. So they must have created, I guess, this family in 2002 and then decided that a bunch of stuff fits in it. Why does it look so grumpy? I don't know. It is a weird looking fish. This has to be a cyprinid, right? This looks like a cyprinid. A gudgeon. Quigo bio heterochilius. Chilius. It is a cyprinid. So these are gudgeons. So the gobionid in I is a subfamily of the cyprinids, which is like carps and suckers and stuff. Well, no, not really suckers anymore, but carps. Gudgeon. What does gudgeon mean, though? Common name for small freshwater fish of Butidae, Cyprinidae, Elichidae, Terra. I have four different families. Three of them I've never heard of. Butidae is a family of sleeper gobies. Okay. Elotridae is also sleeper gobies, though that doesn't look like a goby at all, but sure. And Terra Elotridae, dart fishes. So dart fishes, sleeper gobies, and some carp are called gudgeons. That seems like a really ter- I might change my name on a bad name. That's a pretty terrible name. How are these and these and these classified using the same word? What's next? Salmo baliki. Damn, a new, new species of trout? New trout just dropped? Salmo is like the common genus of the salmons. All European species of salmon and trout. There are some that are outside of Salmo, but this is like every everything that you know. Like if you're in America, let's see. Wow, there's a lot more trout species. Jesus, I did not know there were this many trout species. I have brown trout, lake trout. So I'm gonna die in general. Chars, white fishes, graylings, timens, linux, salmon, trout. Big family. I did not know graylings were in with them. What is a timen? What? This isn't a salmon or a trout? This literally just looks like a trout or a salmon. This is not a salmon. This guy's cute. Chromis. Norfolkensis and Chromis sahelensis. Damselfish. Most damselfish in the genus. Okay, so if you know damselfish, they're usually in the genus Chromis. Oh my, there's a lot of species in Chromis. Look at this. Why do, why do pretty ocean fish get such good representation? Look at how many of these guys have articles in comparison to some of the other guys. We looked at the batfishes. There were like a hundred fish and not a single one had a Wikipedia article. These guys like more than half. Homocentridae is damselfishes and clownfishes. Oh, I didn't know damselfishes and clownfishes were in the same family. 60% of them have a Wikipedia page, but everything else there's like none. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Pretty ocean fish get such special treatment. When this like first fish was uh, released by Kai, like, tw yeah, like a month ago, it got like national media attention because it's pretty. I mean, this is just a, like, admittedly, this is a pretty fish. How many people do you think talked about this? <laughs> How do you think, how many people do you think talked about Scombarodes pelagicus? Probably like three people saw it and went, eh, yeah, okay. What? Oh, this fish is sick. Okay, there's no way this fish wasn't looked at. I assume this one is, yeah, BC. Eros fromenis, Kishi. Oh, wow. Oh, they only have two out of all of those recognized species. It's a cool ass fish. Why do they not have more articles written about them? Look at that coloring. Genus of Garamis, okay. They don't really look like Garamis, but I guess it makes sense. What is there, it's pelvic fins? Yeah, it's pelvic fins are like really, I guess they have like an extended, I don't know if it's a spine or if it's a ray or what. Males are often brightly colored. Their need for soft acidic water and live food prohibits the genus from becoming popular aquarium fish. Makes sense. I was wondering why these are not in aquariums yet. So what's the family? The Garami family is Osphronemidae, which I have never heard before. I'm realizing how little I know about fish taxonomy. I thought I knew a lot. I knew, know a lot about local, but like I'm learning a lot about new ones, which is pretty cool. I enjoy this. Oh, Siamese fighting fish or Garamis. I didn't know that. So if you've ever had a betta fish, they're actually Garamis. So they're in this family, the Osphronemidae, which is in the same family as this guy. Stickleback. We have sticklebacks around here. It's a freshwater fish. Sticklebacks. So if you don't know, sticklebacks are super weird looking. They're like tiny little fish. They're caudal peduncle. So like the part where their tail fin connects to the rest of their body is so thin and tiny. And then they have spines on their back. And they're basically named by how many spines they have on their back. So their family's Gasterostidae, which is uh, stomach bone, bony stomach. And they're mostly named by how many spines they have. 15 spine stickleback, and then there's a nine spine stickleback, and then there's a three spine stickleback, and there's a four spine stickleback. So they have some crazy variation. 
but you can see like the one easy thing they all have in common that tail shape that tail fin shape and then the fact that it's so thin like i can instantly tell that something's a stickleback because look at how thin this caudal peduncle is right like right before it reaches the tail it's so thin so they're so easy to tell and this guy you can even clearly see the spines new species of antheus from easter island i've never heard of antheus Pseudoantheus or Pseudantheus, a genus of colorful reef, reef fishes in the family Anthony, part of the family Ceranidae, groupers and sea basses. Okay, so they're in with the true basses and groupers. I've never heard of them. What are the Anthony? Do they have a name? They're just called Antheas. Yeah, I've never heard of an Antheas. They're quite popular at ornamental fish trade. So I guess I've probably seen them in aquariums, but I didn't know. They're protogenous hermaphrodites. Pretty sick. Born female. If a dominant male perishes, the largest female will often change into the male. Chameleon fish? Bro, this is what I'm, I, I made a joke once that I was like, you could just put any word in front of the word fish and you will find it and it will exist. This is just evidence. The chameleon fish. Baddest genus. Baddest, baddest. The blue perch. Why? This is so far from the perch family. Why do you have to call everything? Baddest ruber. Bad, yeah, the badass genus, the badadai, the chameleon fishes. There's only 30 species total. Is baddest the sole genus? There's 24 species in this genus. So there must be a different genus. Oh, there's Dario, which has probably six species. So there's two genus of chameleon fish, 30 species total. The largest only gets three inches. So they're pretty small in general chameleon fish. If they could change color and camouflage like chameleons. Yeah, I don't think that they do that. Unfortunate. I don't know why they're specifically called chameleon fishes. Maybe they changed color throughout their lifetime. Not necessarily like in an instant like a chameleon. Worm eel? Coloconger maculatus. What in God's name is a worm eel? Short tail eels or worm eels? Oh, they are true eels. Yeah, they're in the Angela form. So they are true eels. Conger... Colacongridae is a family I've never heard of. They're found in Atlantic, Indian, and West Ocean Pacific, or West Pacific Oceans. They're bottom dwelling fish. Okay, they're pretty deep down. They have relatively short and stubby bodies. I've never heard of it, of the Colacongridae. There's only nine known species. There's one genus and nine species in this whole family. The worm eels. What the fuck is this? Schindleria parwa? What is this? This can't be real. They're actually fish. They're called infant fishes. They retain their larval characteristics. They reach a max length of about an inch. Smaller than the dwarf gobies. The world's dwarf gobies. The new smallest known vertebrate. The stout infant fish. Well, can we get a picture? Like the stout infant fish. The smallest fish in existence. Smallest vertebrate. That's crazy. Interesting. <gasps> That's definitely a cyprinid. Chondrostoma smirni. That's definitely a cyprinid. Chondrostoma is in the cyprinidae. The nasses. I've heard of nasses, but not very often. Refers to the protruding upper jaw of these fishes. Nas means nose. Oh. Oh. So because their mouth comes out a little bit in the front, they're called the nasses. Because look, he looks like he has a little, little extra nose. That's cute. There's 24 species in chondrostoma. Wow, they're well represented. Look at this. Oh, this guy's extinct. What happened to this guy? Classified as extinct. The species described from nine specimens caught 100 years ago. In spite of intensive investigations in its only known previous range in the 1980s, 1990s, and 2003, no specimens have been recovered. Wow, so we did this. In the 1900s, this nas went extinct. That sucks. This is the last one we'll look at. There was a new chimera species about a year ago. Chimera compacta. So chimeras in general are in the holocephaly. We know that. This family has, um, what's that? What's that shark? Yeah, this one, Helicoprion. That shark with like the whirl teeth that everyone's obsessed with. They're in the same family as the, as the chimeras. The holocephaly family. Their closest living relatives are sharks and rays, though their last common ancestor with them lived nearly 400 million years ago. That's crazy. The last time that they and sharks and rays had a common ancestor is 400 million years ago, even though they look fairly similar. But the fact that they've survived that long, how many species of chimera are there? There are 50 extant species. That's a lot, actually. I did not know that there were 50 species of chimera out there. Okay, so they're doing pretty good. Yeah, it must just be a good evolution for survival. We learned about all of the new fish from this year. 
lots of new fun stuff. And I got to learn about families I would have never heard of.